What's going on guys, it's Zhou Young coming at you another video for the week. So I haven't fragged my Zoas in a while and I think it's a fragging day. So I had started with just two polyps of this utter chaos a long time ago and I actually decided to place um, a very small frag piece that fell off onto this piece of rock here. And as you can see, we have a bunch of uh, polyps that are growing around this one like small frag area. And I, I want to cut this up so that I can kind of spread it onto different plugs, uh, allowing it to grow a little bit better and just kind of utilizing a little bit more space. Before we get into the fragging, so I want to give you guys a quick update on the 54 gallon tank. Uh, so this week I got in some pods to help seed the tank from Algae Barn. Um, I had bought a few of these um, on a lot of my other reef tanks in the past and it definitely helps jumpstart uh, the tank with just a bunch of live beneficial bacteria plus it just helps mature the tank a little bit faster so i'm doing differently this time around versus the other is i'm actually using uh turbo start to help jump start the tank um, just a little bit fast now the key thing there is it's just only going to help jump start the tank so the tank still will go through cycling and once the levels kind of elevate a little bit i'm going to go ahead and remove the clownfish from the tank so onto fragging and these are the materials that i personally uh, like to use uh, when I'm fragging, I have a mat, a cutting board, um, plugs obviously, um, some containers to hold water, gloves, safety glasses. Uh, I like to use Revive uh, Coral Cleaner. You can use your own kind of dip to help uh, rejuvenate the actual corals that you're cutting up. Uh, some cutting tools and glue. So I generally have two containers with tank water. One will just be purely tank water. And then the other one will be tank water plus um, some revive. Now obviously zoas are toxic to people, so be careful. And that's why I wear gloves, that's why I wear safety glasses. Because if you cut it wrong or something like that and it goes all over your face, your eyes, your mouth, whatever, um, that could be very bad news uh, for you. So uh, just be very careful when you're cutting this stuff. Um, and even probably wear a mask. Um, I, you know, I chose not to wear a mask, but maybe wear a mask. So generally, when I'm looking for a cut, I'm trying to look for the easiest cut possible. If there's a bunch of, you know, zoas just kind of all over each other and the cut isn't good, I'm just going to keep them as a pair, as triples, whatever it is. But generally, look for a clean cut is where you want to cut your zoas. Once you make the cut, uh, go ahead and grab the glue and add a very small amount of glue in the center of the plug. Grab the polyp that you just cut and go ahead and place it on top of the glue. You don't want to do too much glue because if you do too much glue, um, the polyp won't open. Um, so just put a very little. And if you need to apply a little bit more, you can kind of apply at the edge at the end. But uh, generally, just a dab of glue is going to be plenty to hold these guys in just because they do, um, over time, will kind of just latch onto the plug themselves. This is just the initial hold for them. So um, yeah just a little bit of glue. Once the polyp is glued onto the plug, go ahead and just let you know let it dry for about 10 seconds or so and then go ahead and add that plug into the container that has revived. From that big rock initially I was able to frag into four different plugs and now you know the zoas have plenty of room to grow into the new little home or the new little zone here. So um, I'm happy that I can actually do that for them just because they were getting a little bundled up. While I was at it, um, I did have a mushroom that was on a frag piece that already split and it looked like it needed a little bit more room. So I went ahead and just kind of uh, pulled one of the mushrooms off and added it into a separate plug. Normally after you frag a zoa, um, they'll kind of go under a little bit of stress so they won't open that day. Generally they'll open kind of partially, uh, but for the most part they won't open up um, fully. So uh, give it you know some time so here's some footage of the frags uh, the next day as you can see they're happy and open this will kind of give you a general idea if you place too much glue or you put glue in the wrong area where the zoas won't open completely and you know that they should um, or if you cut you know an area very bad or very too close to the zoas um, mouth or something like that or the body which can kill it um, they generally won't open up so this is just a quick indicator if <laughs> you did your cuts proper. All right, guys, and that is the update for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's update. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, until next time, guys, peace.